What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. Guess what, baby button butt? TT Jerry is here. TT Jerry is my guest. Hi guys, I finally made it. Look at TT. Nice to be here. Hi Chris. Hi How you Boo. Doing? I know some of the fans they thought it was Vinny quick, but it's it's TT. It's it's TT. They, T. T. they thought it was Vinny, but it's TT. Jerry. the bag probably, but once I turned my face, it was like, oh no. <laughs> no, you guys look alike. I'm telling you. Yeah, from far away. <laughs> yeah, miles. Well, well, here's the thing. I'm so happy you finally came on the show, TT, because so many times, because the last three weeks we thought you were gonna come, and then we had to get a quick replacement. Yeah. But now you act the star. She's I'm here. The star. Hello, guys. Hi, yeah. everybody. Do you go by he or she? What What are we going I with go with by you? Both. Here, well, you can put the microphone up. You put the microphone oh, up to your mouth. That's dangerous. <laughs> that's one thing about this microphone. It's, it's dangerous. It's, if it's too close to your it mouth. It brings a lot of flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Dad? <laughs> anyway. Yes, yes, Chris, I'm happy I'm here. I finally made it. I couldn't make it before. Keep the mic up, yeah. I just, can't. Just, just, just I like... is dangerous. I ain't keeping it close to my mouth. It might be missing the ball <laughs> by the time it ain't another show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, as best you can, right. even if you got to put it in your mouth a little bit, whatever helps calm you down and present. Okay. So let me ask, because I just want to, because we want to be careful with our pronouns moving forward. We live in a crazy world. I've removed all my Dr. Seuss books, so I don't offend you. Um, okay. Do you go by he or she or they? What do you prefer? I go by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Hello. Yeah, sometimes I go by she, sometimes I go by he. It depends. depends on the mood I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the mood I'm feeling. So right now you feel like, uh, do you feel like a she? Right or? now I feel like a she, he, he, who, who ever did it. I don't know. It doesn't I matter. I just feel like myself. No, because here we have a thing on the show where yeah. we say, we say, I'm all about that fog. I'm free, open, right. and gay. And I feel like that's who you are. You are the definition of fog. You're Jerry the Fog. Free, open, the fog. if I wore a shirt that said fog, if, you, if I gave you a shirt that said fog, free, open, right. and gay, you would wear that? Sure, I will. Yeah. Right now, I'm wearing the one that says queen. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. I don't even know why I asked you about your pronouns. You're like, hello, uh. <laughs> Queen TT. Now, yes. here's the thing about you, TT, is for I've, I met Vinny seven years ago in Coney Island, yes. Brooklyn, which you used to live. Right. I met, I met, um, um, that's where I met uh, uh, Vinny. And then we start our relationship, had a child, and she would always tell me, she'd be like, hey, I have an uncle who's in prison who you'll probably never meet because he's always in and out of jail, in and out of jail. So I thought, I never get a chance to meet you. And then one day, in the beginning of last year, she calls me and she's like, I have amazing news. I was like, what's happening? She goes, T.T. Jerry's getting out of prison. And I was like, oh my, oh my God. God. You got out of prison. One of the first things you did is you came to this apartment and you went to Vinny's closet and you started trying on her clothes. Yes, that's what I sure did. <laughs> so I, as soon as I walked in that door, the first thing I said was, Jazz, beautiful eye, do you have any clothes for me? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Okay, so... When, when, when was the very first time I want to go through your, your, I want to go through your life because it's fascinating and amazing. And like I said, you were always like a myth to me. Like, I, you know, when I met Abuelita, when I met, you know, this, you know, junior and everybody else, I was like, Oh, I'm never going to meet Jerry. I'm never going to meet Jerry. And then when you came out, I was like, Oh my God, it's so amazing to finally meet you. So when was the first time that you went into prison? Put the mic by your mouth, even the, if it's dangerous. The first time I went into prison was like, wow. I was like around 23. Okay. What was it for? What was the charge? What was the initial charge? Grand larceny. Grand larceny. Okay. Did you yeah. do it? Are you guilty or innocent? I did do it. Yeah, I plead guilty to everything I do. I plead guilty. Oh, okay, so that so you're not trying to... Yeah. That's what I like about He's you. He's an honest thief. He's an honest thief. Yeah, well, because... not a thief anymore, yeah. But not a thief. He's was, reformed was, now. Was, was, No. Actually. No, are you kidding me? I was take. Vinny was at the doctor appointment checking on the baby who she thinks she saw a penis and last I week. I don't look at it like if I was a thief, cause... No, I... I, I don't... I don't you, know... You were you were like yeah. Robin Hood. You were providing for your family. Yes. Yeah. You As a matter of fact, when I think about like to provide yeah. for my family and give to my family, I always wanted to see my family feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, help them with what I could have helped them, but I couldn't help them successfully, like doing something for myself the right way. I felt like that was my life. Like Yeah. For me to provide to survive my family, I felt like I had to go out there and get it right in a negative way not in yeah. a positive way it was like it, it was sad too though because 
Uh -huh. I knew the consequences that was going to come behind that. Right. And everything. But at that moment, I didn't think about it. Right. You I just did it. I always had my family on mine first. Yeah, your family. Before I even had myself on mine. Right. You, you, know, you were saying, I'm taking this for my family. Yeah, also for me, not only for my family too, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I had to I know, support myself too. I know, because Vinny, Vinny, she told me, she used to tell me like, you know, you take it, like you come out of jail and then you'd come and you'd have like, you know, brand new shoes, brand new pants and be like, what do you guys want? No, and I used to come home with mad diamonds. That's what I started. <laughs> I had and the look most at Vinny's pissed because she don't got one on her finger. I now had I'm in the trouble. most jewelry when you were bringing it home. That's when I had the most jewelry in my life. <laughs> yes, I do remember when I used to steal a lot of diamonds and I just used to give it to my family and it was like nothing to me after i used to do what i did it was like nothing to me right once i gave it away i felt better right you know, not having it on me knowing that i just took that from somebody right you know and once i didn't have it on, on me anymore and i gave it away i felt really felt good like yeah i know i i listen I think a lot of a lot of criminals in our in our system are misunderstood. You were doing it because you thought it was a positive thing. And it's not like I was a bad person because I have a good heart. I'm not a bad person. Yeah, you have a great heart. I'm a. I mean, yeah, you have high cholesterol, but with. it was just it was it was like a like a hobby. That was like a hobby for me. Right to steal. It, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. And what was your favorite thing you ever stole? My favorite thing I ever stole. <laughs> 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 Thank you, wanna know? No, we do, we do. So, come on, what, what's the favorite thing? Now, That's a good question. For real, for real, the first thing I ever stole my the jewelry store. What? How, how did it happen? And did it wasn't just one diamond. It was like the whole case. Right. Wow. Like the whole thing. They used to come and I used to go. I used to dress real nice. I used to go in with my little suitcase and everything. Like I was as professional. As a man or as a woman you would dress? As a dude. As a dude. Like okay. if I was professional, so I used to put on my little suit, my little tie, my little suitcase, go in right. there like I've had my own business. <laughs> right. Or I used to go in with a bouquet of flowers like I wanted to buy a nice... <laughs> Engagement ring for my wife. Yeah. You know, surprise. So I said, oh, okay, great. Yeah. They used to put a whole case of diamonds and everything there. So I, she used to try it on. I said, oh, that's nice. I like that one. And when I see, she, she used to put it on. I used to tell her, do you have a necklace that could go with it? A nice, cute necklace that would right. match the ring? Right. She goes, sure, sure. She used to leave the whole case there. Once she turned around, I used to take the whole thing and just walk her right out the door. Give Bye. Away all see ya. Peace out. Take, oh, if I'm going to take something, I might as well take it all. But let me ask you. I'm not going to go in there and get caught for one last little piece and just walk out the door and get busted. I might as well just take the whole shit and keep on going. Yes, that's what it's... Yeah, that, um, she kids, if you're out there listening, take it all. Take it what all. What are you making these small... Don't be small-minded. Get out there and make a difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but when you would steal, let me ask you, because it's fascinating to me, and I appreciate the honesty. What, there you go. You look oh good. God, Here we, my hair's a mess. No, it looks good. Yeah, it looks By the good way, this you. is, this is, and huh? this is not your real hair. This no, is, it's not my real hair. I'm sweating like a motherfucker <laughs> under this fucking wig. <laughs> I'm about to just take it off. <laughs> no, well, whatever you want to do, you want to take it off? To keep no. It, it looks beautiful like that. Um, you, when you would steal something, because I know me, the reason why yeah. I'm scared to commit a crime is is because I feel like if you took my freedom away, you put me in prison, right. I would be terrified. So if I stole something and committed a crime, right. my whole life would then revolve around, oh, am I going to get caught? Are the police going to knock on my door? Is going to turn me in? When you would steal something like that, did you not even think about getting caught or think about the repercussions of going to no. prison? No. That didn't even go through my mind. He didn't go through your mind at all? It mm -hmm. didn't scare it you? Only, no, it only used to go through my mind once I used to see myself behind bars. That's when I used to start thinking about it. All the shit that I did was... I regretted it afterwards. Right. After I did it and ended up in prison, but while I was doing it, right. None of that shit used to go through my mind. Right. Right. It's so like so when you so when that gate cuz you know sometimes we we'll watch on TV when that gate clinks, you know, and you see it and like you hear that sound like that's it. And then and then so that's real. Like even for yeah, you someone who was real. who throughout your life you've been in prison many times, every time you would go, you would say, "Oh man, like I what is that? What That's is that? My phone. The TG's phone? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? What's it? Race. Erase it? Shut it off. Who, yeah. It's pro <laughs> That's Decl probably one of my sugar daddies. Seriously. You, if you're one of the sugar daddies, you're watching um, the show. He's with me now. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, so 
you know, the, it would really set in then. Like sit, w when when you would go to prison, would you have a cellmate or would you be by yourself in the cell? No, I wish they did put me with a cellmate. They never put me with a cellmate because I had little breasts. I was mm -hmm. a transgender. Right. And they don't put two gay people together in a cell. Right. Because they then you know, you're going to be free out and all kind of shit. But... I always used to be by myself in a cell. Which you know, which is not good, yeah. right? You would feel isolated. Yeah, but I, and at times I felt good though being by myself. I would have rather be by myself than be with a bunkie or somebody else. Really? You would rather be by yourself? Yeah. Interesting. Because how does it work? Yeah. Like you go into prison. How long would you have to stay in a cell when you go? Oh, as many years they give you. No, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, like... <laughs> they give you 20 years. You got to be in that cell for 20 years. <laughs> no, that I know. What's the longest prison sentence you ever got? 15. 15 years. So Straight. when the judge hit that thing, it said 15 years. Were you like, oh my God? Or were you like, yeah, no, guys? No, I said, yeah, here I go. You were like, here I, I go. I got to go to work for 15 years. That's how you felt. I'm going to go yeah. do go to work. Do what I got to do for 15 years. But did you ever at any point feel when you were in prison through any of your stints, like fear for your life or got of beat up or I anything did. like that? Of course, when I first got sentenced for 15 years, I just said that's a joke. But when I got sentenced for 15 years, of course it went through my mind. Of course I was fear. Of course I was scared. Because I was doing so much time. I never been to a big ass max. Right. Where they got real criminals doing 50 to life, 100 to life, 200 like to life. You met murderers and rapists and everything. I met, I met Son of Sam. I met. Um, wow. Uh, I what met was he Son like? What was You oh, can't just breeze past cool. that. He was kind of cool. He was cool. <laughs> would, now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If Son of Sam was into that, if he wanted like a prison blowjob, would you do something like that for him? I don't think if the money was right. If the money was right, there you go. Okay. Okay. You know, so what, I mean, I had to survive in there. You know, yeah. that that's the only problem when you go to prison, you got to learn how to survive in prison. Right. So especially if you don't have somebody taking care of you from the outside right. or they still do take care of you from the outside, but it's not enough to right. survive. Right. You know, so you got to struggle in there. I've been through so much shit in there. Yeah. I had to struggle. I had to do so much shit. I had to sell my body at times to get food, right. to eat. Right. You know, it, it's kind of sad in there. It, I believe it, it. it. And it's a whole different world because once you out here, it's so different in there. It's like you live in a whole different world while you in there. Right. It's, it's totally the difference. It's nothing like the outside. Right. So when I got those 15 years sentence, it was like, yeah. wow, I got to do this and I got to do it by myself. Right. So I started forgetting about the streets. Right. I forgot everything about the street, and I started dealing with everything in there right. and living my life in there mm -hmm. as me being me. Right. And for me to get around, I had to be real. I had to be me. I had to show who I was because if you gay and you try to be on the low and you try to hide it, it's dangerous. I better not go to prison then. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> Talking so much about that fat butt and everything of yours, you hey, better not hey, go to prison. Hey. Would I, would I be, would, okay, let me ask you that. If I was gonna stop checking him out, hey. I know. No, he told me no because remember I, he saw the first time he saw me when last year he was like, I "Oh, you work out." Chris, that's my boy. Yeah, but then he told me I look fat, but now I don't look fat anymore. Uh, you think I lost weight now? As a matter of fact, I don't like white boys anyway. True, you don't. You I'm don't. A black. I like. Yeah. I like black guys. You know why? <laughs> That's why we put the microphone like that for you. <laughs> but let anyway. me ask you a question. When you, when you, I got first of all. First of all, before we get any further ahead, um, I just want to let you know too. I want to talk about Son of Sam, and I just want to let you know if you ever did go back to prison, mm -hmm. you would never be alone because the family of of the chaotic and the Christians, we would support you. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Yeah. One of those tiers will go directly to support TT Jerry in prison, so he doesn't have to sell that ass pussy behind bars um, well i don't think i'm going back to prison no you're never going back to prison um but let me ask you this then let me ask you this w son of sam yeah. um when you were in there with him what was he like what was he like behind bars he was at first he wasn't a christian but now he's a christian but he was calm he didn't even look like that type of dude right you know and it's crazy because you meet so many people in prison that I met um um Osorio killers, all those murders, right. and they don't seem like those type of people. Like they really go out there. So and son of Sam these felt no different than any other prisoner to you. No, he was he, he when you looked at him, he didn't look crazy or anything no. like that. No, he was just a regular just guy a in regular the prison. Normal dude. Right, and you yeah, had, you would have never thought that he did the things that he did out there. Guy, a guy like son of Sam, is he a celebrity in prison? Um, yeah, they usually at first they had him locked up in protective custody. Right. Away from population. Right. 
you know, but then they put him back in population and that's how he started knowing people started getting to know him more. Right. They have respect for him because everybody there's a criminal. You can't judge nobody else in no. prison. That's one thing you about prison. You cannot judge this guy because he's a rapist. You can't judge him because he's a murderer. You can't judge the other one because he's a drug dealer. Right. We all the same in there. Right. Everybody in there is the same. We're doing time. We're criminals. In there. Right. Yeah. So it's just, so, yeah. I mean, but the most, the least respect that people had for people that were in there was the child molested kid. So if you molest a child, you're done in you're prison. Done. Like what? Like you're not well, safe. Not really, but they usually put you in a, in a safer place. And sometimes they throw you in population, but you will always have a problem. Either you right. end up getting cut, right. or you end up getting abused, or... They use you for a whole bunch of shit. They they really tr- mistreat you. I have one question. Really bad. What yeah. would you and Son of Sam talk about? What was a typical conversation with him? Oh, I used to tell him why why he used to do those crimes. Why made, why used to make him do that? And he said it was just the devil. That's what he used to come out with all the time. Diablo. Oh, the devil used to make me do it. The devil used to make me do it. I used to hear voices. The devil used to make me do it. And I didn't like people. Right. He said he didn't like seeing people together, mm-hmm. some couples together. Every time he used to see couples together, he used to get like angry, like, like, like real upset. Like, right. He couldn't see that. He, he couldn't see he that. He couldn't see people together. But nobody messed with him. Nobody would abuse no, him or push at him around. In the beginning, they used to call him names and everything. But then what would they call him? Dickhead! <laughs> you fucking murderer! <laughs> you fucking white motherfucking spig they used to spit at him right all kind of shit but then right. that's only in the beginning but then after that everybody just leaves everybody alone oh so you that's- were in prison one of the times you were in prison was when he first got there yeah no not when he first got there he was already there for a while but they were yeah at that yeah. point but, and i also was with um 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 what was his name make sure to talk into the mic the guy the guy that did that movie um damn um um the hard, the son of a real Howard. It, it was in Long Island. The, 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 Amityville Horror. Amityville Horror. You were in um, with that um, guy. With, um, what was his name? Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he was my neighbor. <laughs> the, he was my. Not neighbor. Ryan Reynolds, the actor. The, the guy. No, that, not Ryan Reynolds, oh, the actor. Like, the holy the, the oh, one that killed. Did? The one that killed all his family. They made a movie. Afterwards. He was your neighbor in prison. Yeah, the Amityville he was Horror my House neighbor. guy. He Here, was pull my, him up. Pull him up. Amityville Horror House guy. Yeah, he was my neighbor in prison. That guy was so in love with me. That guy fell in love with me. That guy used to buy me everything I wanted. He used to buy me commissary. He used to order sneakers for me. He used to order clothes for me. Put money in my account. But you wouldn't give him up. Here, Ronald, Ronald DeFeo Jr. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, right here. Is he dead? That Did he was, die? <laughs> He's still alive. Got really excited. That one. From prison. I used to talk. Make sure to talk into in the, the, in the mic. Ronald Here, DeFeo. TT, in the mic, the in the mic. mic. Ronald yeah. DeFeo. Yeah, I used to talk to him Ronald all the time. Ronald DeFeo, I used to talk to him all the time. He was my neighbor, my yeah. next door neighbor. And he tried, and he wanted, and and he he wanted to talk to you. he fell in love with me. Yeah, he fell in love with me. And I wasn't afraid of them people either. I wasn't afraid. He used to tell me that he did it and that he needs to go back out there and finish his grandmother. He said he's the only one that he didn't care was his grandmother. <laughs> oh, so he, so wow. he said after 25 years, I don't know if he got released or what. I believe they well, let him go. His grandmother go. better hope not. <laughs> I believe they let him go. I don't know if I'm sure they did, but he said that he still got to finish one more person. That was his grandmother. <laughs> oh my God, what a psycho. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you never hooked up with he him. He didn't look like... No, I didn't hook up with him, yes. but I was... <laughs> There but it is. No, 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 no. I will keep it real. I will keep it real. I used to talk to him and everything, but I used to use him. Right. I used to How use so? him like, to survive, you so know? What does that mean, though? Since he was offering me shit, he wanted to buy me shit. I said, why not? You why know? not? Yeah. I was nice to him. I used to cook for him once in a while. You know, right. he was my neighbor. Right. I used to cook for him and shit like that. He, you know, we were, we were chilling, we were cool. Right. I, you know, I flashed on him, you know, I put yeah. on something sexy. He used to put in the mirror in my cell. And of course. I used to do a little dance for him yeah. and all this and that. That's you know? nice. Vinny does the same. Yeah, that's I nice. Did that. I did that once, actually. It's yeah, yeah. Like, Why? To get a ride home. What do you mean? What'd you do to get. <laughs> what? To, from prison? No, not from prison. <laughs> You've been in jail, yeah, too. Don't lie, girl. <laughs> <laughs> not like Titi, though. Um, okay, so that was so, so yeah. The, oh, it was DeFeo, yeah. So, but let me ask you this: so, eighteen years old, you go in. Is that the one that you did for for fifteen? I'm sorry, twenty three years old. Is that the one you did for fifteen years? No. 
So when you first went in for 23, at 23, how long did you do? Only fa- two years. Two no, years. I got about a year. When you would that go, was nothing. When you would go into prison, though, like especially being in prison for 15 years, does the world look so... Di- I got two questions. One, do you actually have anxiety about the day you're going to get released because you're so used to living life the other way? Does it scare you to come outside? And two, yes. does the world look and feel so different when you come yes. out? Yeah. When I did those 15 years and they were going to release me, I mean, I was happy and I was scared at the same time. Mm-hmm. I was happy because I knew I was going to see my mom. I was going to see my family again. Right. But then again, I was afraid, nervous being locked up for so long. I was nervous to go back out there. Right. And when I first came out, it was Jasmine and... and AKA Vinny. Vinny. Jesse, you said they went to pick me up. Vinny's sister is Jesse. On the fourth already. So, the, by the way, J- Vinny's sister, J- Jesse, has the same exact hair as you're wearing right now. Yeah. That's the same exact, they got the same hair. And, um, um, <laughs> when I got released, so while I was, when I got off the um, authority, and I, I was like, what the hell is going on around here? I see so many people like talking by themselves. Right. Because when I went in, there was no cell phones. Right. They, wow. had, they had the phones, but they had the big ones with the antenna that right. you had to go outside and right. go for the house. Right. So I'm out there and I see all these damn ass people talking by themselves. I say, what the hell is going on? But wait here? a second. Hold on. Hold on. But but out of all those 15 years in prison, nobody smuggled a cell phone in their ass into the into no. the population? Really? No. Not, that I, not that I knew. I, I, I never seen no cell phone up in there. You ever smuggle anything in your ass? Oh, so many times. <laughs> what was what, 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 what was what was the what was the most painful thing to smuggle? Like what was what he said? It, it was fine. Is it not fine? To snuggle in your ass. You really gotta have balls. You really gotta have balls to put something up your ass. Talking <laughs> to the microphone. Talking to the microphone. You, you gotta. Oh, you can't hear me if I don't speak on the microphone. Right. No, but we. we but, but but I'm saying to smuggle into prison, like no, because I know I know. No, you I never smuggle anything. I never put nothing up my ass just for the for the hell of it to bring up in prison or anything. No, just if I was gonna put something in my ass for my joy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I put something and break my ass and bleed out my ass or something like. No, okay. I know. now what is what is the repercussion? What was there a penalty if you were caught having sex with another one of the inmates? Oh, of course, you, you get a new charge. You get a new charge. You get. You can't have sex with if you're. No, all, you can have. Why sex. not? You can't be in an open having sex with nobody. But you would sneak but it. But they knew that you was having sex. Mm-hmm. You know, of just course, can't get caught. Yeah, just don't get caught. Don't get That's caught. It. You ever have sex? What you're doing? You ever have sex or perform a sex act with a guard? Um. Yeah. That's a yes. <laughs> But you can Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to say no name because it's no, not No, 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 don't say any names. Don't say any names. But, but yes, happened. I did. There was a few officers that used to come and hit on me and everything. And they used to pay me. They used to bring me shit from the streets. Right. Take care of me. I mean, not to brag or anything, but on my time when I was there, I was one of the hottest transsexuals in there. Mm-hmm. You know, because they used to look at me like if I was a woman. Prisoners in prison, when you look like there's little titties, long hair, shit like that. You the closest thing to a woman, of course. In prison, of course. And especially if they're doing so much time, twenty five to life, fifty to life, a hundred to life, they're gonna look at you like a woman. And because they, they're not, and they're and not gay. They just, they're just no, surviving. They're not gay, but at the end, at the end, they turn out to be gay. You get them because yeah. I, I, I flipped them. <laughs> you know, I have flipped so many guys in prison. You think you could flip it's me? It's crazy. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say nothing about that because I'm not getting into it. That's a yes. But, <laughs> I remember no. when we used to like visit you, you would point guys out like, I'm going to flip him. I'm going to flip yeah, him. No. And I used to and go, go back and I flipped him. Okay, but what's, yeah. a, what's the thing about a flip? Like, and how can you tell that you're going to flip somebody? Like, what is it? Like, they're more sensitive? Like, no, it's that I, I could feel it, you know, especially by the way they look at you. Mm-hmm. Or especially those guys, they're always throwing comments at you. They're always saying, oh, this fucking homo. Oh, this fucking faggot. Oh, he thinks he's a woman. 
Those are the ones that always end up fucking with you. Very interesting. Right? Those are always the ones, and those are the undercover ones, especially when they're always around the people's, oh, there's fucking homo, there's fucking faggot, there's a woman. Right. Right. And Chris, that. you're really not gay because you're always talking about being gay. So that means me in the, the There opposite. you go. So it took T.T. Jerry to finally <laughs> convince me that I'm not gay. No. I'm not gay. I you don't think I'm gay. talking about all that shit on YouTube and everything. I don't I don't look at you as gay and I don't believe you are gay. That's just you being the way you are. Right. That's just you. You're a funny dude. You're a comedian. Yeah. And you like people to, you know, laugh at If your I'm gonna jokes. be totally honest with you, it would be so much easy my life would be so much easier if I was in a relationship with you over Vinny. Wow. If, 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 what? Because he's so understanding. What? He doesn't care. Remember the time we broke up and TT was like, this is what happens in life. He's like, you need to support each other. You got kids. Oh, yeah, so easy. Thing. But you, any move I make, you're like, let me see your phone. Let me see your phone. <laughs> and just always so mad you at me. You cannot always be so insecure. No, that you got to give be. freedom. First when you in honest, a relationship, you got to give me. freedom to that person. Right. That used oh. to be me. I've known wow. your past your your passcode to your phone for mad long now and Uh-oh. I haven't looked. Pimp change it. Uh-oh. And Uh-oh. I haven't looked once. No, but t- t- honestly, you got to be free. And here's here's what I want to talk to you about too, TT, is because you're somebody, you've been in your you know, you're you're older now. Okay, yeah, whatever. Take it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, boom. Hair is beautiful. Not it's you. Not. I think it looks great. And look, by the way, shout out to Bella. Shout out the uh, tattoo. This is my next tattoo right here. Just a little butt. Oh, T. Um, look, Vinny. Ha- Vinny has that on her boobie. It's the same. It's the same one, but it's on the belly button. Oh no, it's a flower. Flower. Oh, so that's a prison tattoo that you got. But okay, here. You, yeah, if you sit down talking to the mic, is, is this wild? <laughs> now, a prison tattoo though. Is that illegal? You gotta hold the mic up, Didi. I got another prison tattoo there too. Wow. Okay. And then yeah, and I mom. have another one here. Yep, yeah. There you go. Boom. Another prison tattoo. Those are a prison tattoo. Beautiful, matchy matchy. When you get a prison tattoo, is that illegal or that's a legal no, job? You could get in trouble. You could get a ticket for that. So how and do they do it? How do they smuggle in the things to give a pr- the guns? They make them out of. They take them. They used to break them out of the um um radios, FM radios, the cassettes, right. and make the gun. Well, see, because 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 I feel like prisoners are so innovative. Like when you watch a show about prison break or anything about, it, they can make all these things. They're making their own wine. They're making tattoo guns. They're making. Yes. So do you we feel used to like make our own wine and everything? Do you feel like it's because you're just sitting there all day, like not distracted with nothing to do, that you start to become innovative with? Like, like, I, I guess I'm basically asking: Did you go into prison and actually learn skills and things? Yeah, I like you became like a better carpentry, person. Carpentry, electric, um, floor covering. They got so many things that you could do in prison. But you learned all so, that. You didn't know that before prison. No, I didn't know that before I went to prison. But now you could come out. You know, carpentry yeah, and all I that. I could do that. I could pull out anything. I could pull. I could do floors. You I could, could do, do a whole bathroom. I know how to do all that. Now. How great would it be if you hired a contractor? Yeah. To like do your house, and you knew it was gonna do a great job, but you didn't know it was gonna be TT, and TT showed up okay, and like that. And TT was like, "I'm here, <laughs> just ready to. I'm your carpenter." TT, uh, give me yeah. that wood. Um, go because now things have shifted so much since you've been in prison. There's been so many things that have changed about society. Like now, you know, you can't mispronounce a gender. You can't, you know, if you if if you if you say, you know, there's certain people now. If you said, "Hey," You know, what? what is your child, a boy or a girl? They'll be so offended by that, which whatever, society's happening. How are they going to be offended if you ask them what's your child, boy or girl? Well, I'm asking you as a member of the LGBTQ community, how do you feel about all that? What's your take and stance? Because you're from another era, but you're also, you know, living with all this. So how do you feel about all that? How I feel about that? I mean, I feel like if you are who you are, why should you be ashamed of what you are? Right. You know, if you know you wasn't born a woman and you're trying to be a woman and if they tell you, like, like you said, oh, you're not, you're not, what was that with you? Hmm? TT, let me ask you a question. Have you ever experienced hair loss? Yes. Really? I, I go like in my entrance and like in the middle. Right. I lose my hair for stress, a lot of stress. In well, here, I got something that's going to help you out. I uh, got something that's going to help you out where you don't have to wear a wig no I more. I try to use garlic and all that shit. That shit, that shit helps, but that's not shit no. that helps. No, I got even something better than garlic <laughs> for you. Garlic and all that. that shit you ready for this? Listen, yeah. you ready for this? Keep.com. 
Keeps.com, I'm going to get a few. All you got to do is go to Keeps.com, which is a, it's, it's a, it's a, a website and a, a company that will help you. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. So treatments take treatments will take four to six months to see Have results. you tried it? Yes, and look at me. But you have hair already. Because you never of Keeps, because I went to Keeps.com. That's what happened. I went to Keeps.com because I'm preventing hair loss. And it's one of these things. It's FDA approved. People love it. It's been working for everybody. All you got to do, listen to me, baby. All you got to do is go to Keeps.com slash chaos. That's Keeps.com, uh-huh. K-E-E-P. Dot com slash chaos c-h-a-o-s and you're going to get your first month free so one month free if you go to keeps.com slash chaos two out of three men are going to experience uh, hair loss and you know yeah. yeah and 50 million men in the uh, suffer from uh, male pattern baldness right. but not you anymore baby tt i'm telling you you're going to go out there keeps.com oh my God, would be so great if that does work i will love you forever hundred percent. Well, we're going to get it. I'm we're just gonna, losing a lot of hair. We got it for you, baby. It's coming. And discreet packaging. You're very used to discreet packaging. Discreet packaging. <laughs> so nobody's ever going to know that you got this hair loss stuff. And uh, treatments start low, very, very low cost. Only $10 a month. And keeps offers all types of stuff. And uh, uh, they have a, a virtual doctor. So a doctor is going to consult you. And medication is going to be delivered straight straight to your door every three months. So a doc, you're going to have the doctor's orders right there on Zoom. They'll tell you about it. They're going to um, deliver the medication discreetly. So nobody's going to know like, oh, T.T. Jerry has hair loss problems. No, 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 no. You just go to keeps.com slash chaos. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash chaos. And you're going to get your first month free. Great. Yep. And that's it's all like- you got to do. Okay, though. Are you I'll gonna do try it? Try it. Yes. Do you even have a computer? I uh, no, I don't right now. At the moment, I got one, but it's not connected. Okay, we're gonna connect it, and we're gonna get your hair back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. TT, what yeah. about with therapy? Uh-huh. I got a solution for you because you were talking about you know how we both talk to therapists or whatever. I've been going to BetterHelp. Uh-huh. Com and talking with therapists. Best therapist I ever had. They helped me so much. All online. With COVID and everything like that, you don't have to worry about it. They got all types of expertise, uh, yeah. all types types of experts. They got people that could talk about from the times you had in jail. They got people to talk about with the sausage in your ass. They got people to talk about me having anxiety. They got all different types of therapists that can handle anything. They're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, and they make it very, very easy for you. Yeah. So we're going to go, because if you, um, you said you were looking for a therapist, we're yes. gonna, I'm going to get you hooked up with one at BetterHelp. Yeah. Yeah, you could talk about all, whatever you want to talk about. About anything you want to talk about. Anything you want to talk about. What's one thing you want to talk to your therapist about? They'll do it. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds great, yeah. Do you want to do it? Sure. Okay, so I got an offer for you. If you go to betterhelp.com slash chaos, that's C-H-A-O-S, betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash chaos, you're going to get 10% off your first month. So 10% off your first month. So that means that it doesn't matter, you know, what you're going through. If you don't have the money, whatever, you're going to get 10% off. They'll give you 10% off. Just put the promo code chaos. That's all you got to do. Okay, dog. That sounds great. Betterhelp.com. Betterhelp.com. What do you think is one thing you need help with right now? Everything. (laughs) <laughs> so, everything right so betterhelp.com is gonna it's affordable everything. it's online counseling um you know th- you're gonna get timely responses i'm telling you if you need help right now for everything go to betterhelp.com get hooked up promo code chaos 10 percent off your first month it's gonna Got be it. beautiful baby i'm gonna Great. go to betterhelp.com and tell them i want to transition to be a woman just like you <laughs> don't do it <laughs> Do you feel like, no, basically what I'm asking is, is like with the way that society is so PC, politically correct right now, if you, if someone wants to identify as a woman, but they're a man, but you say, sir, they'll get offended and all these problems or, you know, they're taking certain things but away. they get offended because they're trying to be a woman and if you call them sir. I'm just saying people in general amongst like how much our world has evolving, especially within the transgender community now, you know, sometimes people feel in our society, like, oh, you know, it's so hard because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend anybody and I don't want to call you by the wrong name or misinterpret how you are. Like, you know, and I feel like the kids of our, you know, the youth of our day, sometimes I'm like, oh, this all feel like they must feel so confused. Like it must be such a confusing feeling when you're like, am I a man? Am I a woman? And then you get angry at someone if they choose, you know, if they call you by the wrong name. You know, why should I be angry if I know what I am? Right. If I know what I am, why should I get angry? Like right now I'm walking through the street. Okay. I'm a transgender. Somebody calls me, sir. 
Right. Why should I get angry? Right. I'm putting myself out there. Yeah. So you wouldn't I'm care putting, if somebody... I, I would not care. So why should you get angry if you're the one putting yourself out there and you're the one being who you want to be? How are you going to let somebody else offend you? That's... you. Yeah. I... I... I I won't, I, it won't bother me. Right. I don't know if it bothers other people when, if a transgender is walking through the street and the guy goes, yo, sir, and she turns around, all right, you turn turning around because he says, sir, <laughs> so if you wasn't a sir, you would have never turned around, right? It's true, it's so a good point. Why should it bother you if you're turning around because that woman is calling sir, calling you sir? Right, so so do you, so, so I think, because what we were talking before, it's like, you feel like a lot of these, you know, kids or like the, the people coming up now, they they don't know who they are, they're, they're like, but you are someone, you know exactly who you are, and you are. I mean, I believe that everybody knows who they are. Right. Everybody grows up to be who they are, what they want to be, you know, and there's no way in the world that you're not going to know that you was a boy or a girl. You know who the hell you are. Right. Okay. And that's your choice. That's your choice of growing up who you want to be. Right. You know, you got to feel comfortable within your skin. You know, once you feel comfortable within your skin, hell what people say. Right. I don't care what people say about me. Yeah. I'm going to continue being me. Right. If I'm comfortable the way I am, ain't nobody going to stop me of being comfortable. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going to stop me of doing what I want to do. Right. Ain't nobody going to stop me of walking the way I want to walk or, or wear my hair the way I want to walk. Right. And wear it. Right. You know? Right. I learned. You, yeah. You just be yourself. Don't let nobody put you down. They put you down hell with it. Hey, bye. Right. You know, and if they talk about you, they talk about you either good or bad because everybody talks about everybody. See, that's what I feel. You come as a, as you, that's why I have so much respect for you because you just come from a place of strength and confidence where I feel like a lot of the PC people now are coming from a place of weakness. They want to yeah. cancel people and yell at people and wait for that one mistake you, to make that one mistake where I feel like you see people, you see yourself and you see others as people. We all are making mistakes. We're all human beings. Like yeah. not Ain't everybody's all good or all bad. We all make mistakes. Right, right. And I, I, I feel like, you know, if that, that's so good to hear because I feel like especially some of the fans of the show or some of the, you know, podcast listeners would think like, oh, uh, you know, mo all these new age people, like if I, they want to just cancel me and if I say one wrong word, my life is over. And it's like, no, that's not the way it is. Like we could just have conversations and ask questions. Like right. sometimes I feel if I was to ask someone from your community a question they would get offended by even the question. You know what I mean? Like if I was to ask you, hey, were you born, when you were born, did you know that you were going to be a woman or did you know that you want to turn into a woman? Do you feel like you're a man with a woman's brain or a woman with a man's brain? I'm some, some, I had, I had bumped into a whole bunch of them and I know a whole bunch of them and a lot of them be saying that, um, I know I'm Even a you man, saying them, that could but, be offensive. But, what? Look, because you're saying a whole <laughs> bunch of them. They're people. That's what people would say. That's what that's what some that's what seriously that's some fat white All right, lady let them from get Arkansas. Offended. Let them get offended. So what? But that's me. That's the way I am. That's the way I speak. Either you like it or not. That's your choice. Sorry, to get Karen. Offended. Sorry. Hey, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Felicia. That's what it's it like, is. You know, that's right. that's why everybody has different personality. Everybody, everybody's different. Right. You know, everybody got their own ways of speaking, of saying things, of, of doing things. Right. You know, n nobody is the same. Right. Everybody's different. So, so of course, a lot of people are going to get offended. Right. You could get offended. He could get offended. I'm not going to get offended because I'm different. You different. It depends yeah. on where you take it. Right. You know, the way you see yourself or the way other people see you. So what? Right. You know, it's like when people talk about you, like I was saying, either good or bad. And some people get offended when they talk about them bad. Yeah. You know, why are you going to get offended, honey? Yeah. Be happy they talking about you, even if it's good or bad. Stop worrying when nobody speaks about you. Nobody talks about you. That's when you start wondering, why ain't nobody talking about me? Why nobody say nothing about me? Right. Right. You know? So as long as, but yeah. As, if people still talking about you, either good or bad or doing bad or good comments about you, feel good about it. That's it. Feel important. Why? Because people have you in their mind. They're thinking about you. Right. Oh, Vinny, you want to say something? Oh, okay. I thought Vinny was going to say when, something. When did you know who you were? How did you figure when it out? When did I know? Ooh, who I was? Yeah, when? How old were you when you said, "Oh, I am, I'm TT, I, I am who I am"? Confused. I really didn't know if I was or not. But tell you the truth, I never had a female. I only had one female. You had in a my girlfriend. Life. I remember, wasn't it? 
Mel. Oh, oh yeah. hello. <laughs> is she Sorry. listening to the podcast? Uh, we don't know. It's but no. anyway, it was. It well, was that my, wasn't my girlfriend. It, it was, was mommy's like, like one, like best her best friend. friend. Yeah. Okay, you but, think one of your mom's friends even knows how to turn on a podcast? Your mom oh, has. Stop it. Do you think you your mom know. knows how to get the podcast? Yeah, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> Look at Titi. <laughs> You I, want, put, uh, I put a fan on for you. In the back. <laughs> We're almost there. done. I don't even feel that. Um, no, we go keep on. Okay, no, no, no. So what? Okay, like so yeah. <laughs> so when did so you had one female? That was my only female I ever had. Mm -hmm. And I only made love to her one time. Sorry. Uh, and um <laughs> and you didn't like it? But no, and then that's when I noticed that I didn't like women. You didn't like it. They didn't turn me on. How old were you? I was how old I was. I don't know how old you were. Oh, you was a baby. You was a child. Yeah. <laughs> so what were you? Oh my God, I'm that But old. you were like. I was like 20 in my 20s. You were in I your 20s. In my 20s. So before oh, that, you younger. thought maybe I'm not. You didn't know if you. Did you always know you were gay though? Yes, because I did. I remember I did have a relationship with somebody when I was younger. Right. Yeah. So I knew I was, but I was ashamed about it. In the beginning, I didn't know how to come out because I didn't know how people were going to take it. Right. Especially my family finding right. out. I thought I was going to be thrown out the house or they were going to give me their back or they weren't going to have no respect for me. Right. So I didn't know how it was going to be. So I kept it to myself. Right. And to one time, I think I told my sister was or my mom. Oh, no, one time my mom came to visit me in prison mm -hmm. when I was like 20 something. And I remember I was in prison and we were sitting down and I said, Mom, I had a relationship with a man. Mm -hmm. I told her, I told my mom everything in the visit. Mom, I did this with this guy because I met this guy. His name was whatever. You told her everything, everything? Yes, everything, everything. Whoa. And I <laughs> told my mom what happened. Yeah. And I said, Mom, I am gay. And she comes out in Spanish real loud. And I still, like, uh, in prison, I was, like, still on the low. That was in my beginning of my bits. Yeah. And I still had my mustache. I used to fake my hair and everything. And she came out with that big mouth. And she goes, son, I always knew you was going to be gay. <laughs> real loud. How did she say she it in said, Spanish? What did she say? Ay, hijo, yo siempre sabía que te iba a maricón. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, yeah. my God. I put my head down. Everybody just started looking at me and laughing and like, yeah. you know. And you had and some, some correctional officers like, ooh. Huh? And that's where Titi was born. That's where Titi was born. Titi Jerry. And but your name is not Jerry. I'm sorry, because I may be, because Jerry when you're a man, but what's your female name? Well, my name in prison is J-Lo. J-Lo. So whoever's watching, hello, guys. You J know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> J-Lo. <laughs> And could they be then, watching from prison? By the way, do, do they are no, they allowed to watch no, YouTube or they the don't internet? Have YouTube. I thought you could have Facebook and all that in prison. No, you cannot have Facebook. The only thing they got now is um they give you a tablet which you could watch movies, rent movies, buy movies. Speak you into the microphone. Text, uh, speak. You could text like I could text you. You could text me. Mm -hmm. You could get text messages. Right. Um. So you could and text and therefore you could videos. Text. You could get you could send them videos. I could send them videos of me. Really? Like a 30 second video. But do they check that? Like with an officer? Um, yes, it goes through the so administration it first. It goes first through the administration to so see they if they're allowed see, like, to what have videos it. Videos and pictures you're sending? Yeah. Uh, I, I got a uh, few guys. Cut. I got. <laughs> I, I got stuff to prisoners. No, no I got a few guys. I send them videos to that when I'm at home, I make a little video and I send it to them. Yeah. That's for the, maybe to the son of Sam or to the DeFeo. No, not you know, to the DeFeo. I don't even know what the hell happened to them anymore. I don't know where they at. But well, when you see like when you, a heinous um, crime, like the, like the Amity Vahara or, or, or the son of Sam, do you, there's not one part. Cause like you said, you all understand there's not one party because us as the public, we're like, Ooh, I hope he gets beat up in prison. Like, F that guy. You don't feel no, that way. No, no, You no. understand them more. I understand them. I understand what they've been through. I understand people, what they go through, because I've been through a lot myself. Right. So I understand what the next person might be going through. You know, sometimes you see somebody like, I see you sitting there in a corner. I don't know your life. I don't know what you've been through in your life, you know, for me to come up to you and harass you or call you names and mistreat you. 
I don't know what's going through your mind. I don't know what you've been yeah, in your life. Because I, I know what I've been through my, in my life, you know? Right. So I would like nobody to come up to me and mistreat me and start, no. you know, calling me names. And they don't know what I'm thinking at that moment. They don't know what my life been through, what I've been through in life. Right. Why would I want to go and bother the next man and call him names and harass him and everything for? No. I, I no. don't think that's right. No, it's not right. It's not right. But I think like as a society, we are in a point now, especially where it's called schadenfreude. It, it, it's an old school, you know, German word where we just want to see people fail. We want to see things go down. We want to see the train wreck. Right. You want to see that person fail so much. Like, right. you know, but I feel like when you go, or at least what I'm getting from you is like when you go into prison, the positive reform is you now see people for who they are and right. you can like kind of understand you're not so guarded. You're like, you know, right. Do you think since, since you've been in prison, you know, since all the times you've been in prison from, from, from the first time you went in when you were 23 to the most recent time you got out a few months ago, do you feel like there has been a lot of prison reform or does it feel like the same thing it was in the eighties till, till, till now? Uh, to me, it still feels the same. Right. It just gets worse and worse. Right. Worse and prison, worse. So how so? Like prison what you- gets worse and worse every day. Right. The, the, the abuse, drug. There's more drugs in prison that you could find in the street. That's crazy. Really? Yes. So, so they got so much drugs in prison. So if you're a drug addict in prison, you're not you going to get better behind not bars. Get better. No, no, no. You're going to get worse. Drugs all over prison. Right. All over prison. There's always drugs. Do you think over. that's on purpose to like keep inmates there for longer? I don't know. It's not a purpose. It's the family that be bringing up the drugs. Well, this, the officers in there be bringing drugs too. Really? Yeah. And then what do you expect to give? The, but what do they do? For, like, why they is the reason officer would do guy, that? There was this guy that was officer in Wyoming. Speak it to uh, Mike, Mike. In Wyoming, there was this guy that the officer used to bring him drugs mm-hmm. for he could sell them in prison. Because you make a lot of money in prison right. selling drugs. Like a nickel bag they sell out here for $5. Right. They'll sell it out in there for $50. Wow, it's like Yankee Stadium prices. One little bag for $50. A $5 yeah. bag, they sell it for $50. Wow. Yeah, so you make money in prison. There was this officer bringing mad drugs to this guy. Mm-hmm. But he got busted. Mm-hmm. So then the guy that got busted by other officers, he went, he got locked up. They put him in the hole, which is called SHU. In the box. They put him in the box and everything. Boom, boom. He got new charges and everything and all that. So he snitched on the officer, the one that used to bring him the drugs. Right. Boom. So when they found that out, the same officers went into that cell, took that guy, hanged him up, hanged him up, murdered him, and then they put an excuse that he hanged himself. But it was a lie. The officers did that just to back their asses up. Wow. Because he had snitched on the officer. And they had arrested one of the officers. Right. So they, they said that the inmate hanged up himself. But it was That's the officers lie. that murdered the guy. Do you feel like when you, were there any officers in prison from the times you went that like you actually miss now? Like, do you become friends with all these people? Like, Oh, yeah. They become like my family. Right. Especially being there so long. There's a whole bunch of people in there that I got so close to. Right. That... When I was leaving, I felt I was going to miss. Right. Because they get so attached to you, and they become like your family. Just like I tell you, forget about the outside world. Right. You live in your world in there now, so you start building a new relationship. You start building new friends. So you, so it wasn't like every single morning you woke up, you're like, oh, I'm in this nightmare, I'm still in prison. You start to become, it feels not home. in the beginning. In, in the, the beginning. beginning, it does. In the beginning, you feel like you're in a... Uh, Oh my God. Yeah, no, I, I almost was, snapped in uh, quarantine because I couldn't, you know, when I couldn't go to the super, like supermarket or walk up the it's block. It's crazy, but then after a while, you start getting used to it. You get used to it. You like start, anything you else. You got no other choice but to get used to it. So uh, what, how many different prisons were you in? Oh my God, I'm a celebrity in the whole state. <laughs> Upstate, I'm like all over the place. They, everybody all, knows all you. All over the place. There was people that was coming up in Rikers. Uh-huh. From Rikers Island, just coming up to getting sentenced and everything. And when they used to end up upstate where I was at or to other prison, they already knew who I was while they were in Rikers Wow. Island. That's how, how I was like famous up in prison. <laughs> I was a celebrity in prison. And what do you think And that that's is? what the office used to tell me. You're a celebrity in here. Everybody knows who you are. I never took shit from nobody. 
I have gone gun to gun with weapons. Is with that guys. penises or weapons? No. <laughs> okay. No, because you said gun. I didn't know what you meant. Guns, weapons. Oh, weapons. We make okay. our own weapons, shanks, and all that. I have gone fights to fights with dudes. Me and another guy stabbing each other. I got stabs all over my body. Going really? Gun gun. I remember one really yeah. bad time when you had to be like hospitalized. Because yeah, you got stabbed? Having, yeah. And what I was got, the fight over? No, this one was because this guy fell in love with me. Mm. He was obsessed over me. Blah, blah, blah. Puerto Ricans. I, yeah, Puerto Ricans. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to fall in love. And that's how you get stabbed. So I didn't, I didn't pay him any mind. I liked him as a friend. And I told him, I like you as a friend. You cool people and everything. No, you're going to be mine. If you ain't going to be mine, you ain't going to be nobody. Wow. Blah, blah, blah. So one time I'm in the yard playing handball with little pumpo ass shorts, a little ass t shirt. He comes to the back with something this big. Oh. This big. And he stabs me in the back. It went right through my lungs. Oh, my God. One of my lungs. And when People I are worried around, about COVID. And when I turned around, he got me right here. He what? He got shit all the way in. And he said, you ain't going to be with nobody. <gasps> so He I, wanted to kill you. Yeah, he wanted to kill me. So blood just started Hold it closer, all DT. over my whole body. Hold, hold it closer. Full of blood. Yo, right. So I was like going. I was like just... I mean, he blew one of my lungs. He made you, a you thought you were dying. At yeah, that moment, I you were like, I'm dying. dying. Yeah. And that's... So what happened though then? like that happens, but he No, but what happened? His, the medics came and saw it and everything? They took me and they thought I was then going to make it. And it, I was in Attica. And as a matter of fact, they put me in a chopper because I had seven minutes to make it to the outside hospital. Right. If not, I would have been dead within seven minutes. They flew me on a chopper from Attica all the way to the outside hospital in Buffalo. Wow. And that saved my life. Wow. Yep. Was it con when you, when, did you lose consciousness and all that? Yeah, I was in a coma for a few days. When you woke up in Buffalo, when you're like, oh, that's woke, nice, a new no, place. No, when I woke up, the first thing that I see next to me was my mom. She was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she came up there. Yeah. 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 Your mom was great. I remember when I first I first met her. I first met Abuelita when Jasmine and I, Finney and I started dating. Yeah, and then she, when she passed away. Yeah, my mom was a beautiful woman. Yeah. I remember when they wouldn't let you go to her, her funeral because, no, of, oh because you were in prison. Crazy, yeah. That was messed up. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to commit suicide that day, too. I'm happy you like didn't because we're did, having a great episode. The funeral, after everything was over like a few days later. Right. Yeah, I remember I went to the bathroom. Everybody was sleeping. I took a sheet. I hanged up, and uh, personally, somebody walked in the bathroom. It was real late, but I was sleeping, and they see me hanging with a sheet, and they came to cut me down. Yeah. yeah. I used to go through a lot in there. Yeah. But you're out now. You're out now. We're living beautiful. We're living free, free, open, and gay. We're having a great time now, and you're never going back. No. That's great. Yeah, we can't, I can't lose you. Now that, now that, you, now that I finally met Titi... I can't have you go back in prison. I'll pull my white privilege and make sure you never go back. <laughs> I remember one time I was coming out myself. And it was shower time. Here, to, to the mic in the mouth. And, the in mouth. the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if that's what's going to take to keep and it, it there, was, just imagine it's, you know. It was it <laughs> was, um, it was was um, um, shower day and I'm coming out myself. You know, real sexy and everything. Sure. My little bucket and everything. My little towel, like a little mini skirt. Yeah. And One everybody got the mirrors out looking at me. Oh, my God, baby. What's up, baby? And I'm showing up walking real sexy. I go <laughs> take a shower. I come back. I wear my little skirt again with nothing under, just my little skirt and my little soap, my little bucket, real, real sexy. What was that for? I'm coming back. Everybody's looking at me through the cell with the mirror because you got mirrors. You can stick it out your bars and look at, at the person that's walking by. So everybody looking at me. Calling me, hey, mamita, come here, baby. What's up, baby? Come here, chula, yeah. mamacita, and all that stuff. <laughs> and I'm showing up, walking real sexy. All of a sudden, I fucking flip. I flip <laughs> up in the air. I fall <laughs> flat on my ass. The motherfucking little tower opens wide open. I'm with my legs up in the air with my balls hanging. My balls all the way hanging, everything. Everybody, oh shit, what the fuck? Everybody sticking their mirrors in. I said, honey's play like you never seen them before. <laughs> Don't try to act now like you never seen them before. Well, you you actually, speaking of balls hanging, you brought you brought over the Manscaped ship. Oh, can, can you get yeah. it? Any yeah, quick and just throw it at me? Right yeah, there. just yes. That was the day that we just went th to just throw it. Yeah, that, that was the day that we went to clean your apartment. Right, you went to clean my apartment. So I started searching. I found a whole bunch of stuff. So I came through this just right like here. 
I came by it through this, and it says Bore Deodorant. Right. Mans- so, hold on. Manscaped.com. Man- that, that's from Manscaped.com. Use the promo hey, code Hey, by chaos. the way, those look cool on you. Oh, I like you. those. Thank yeah. You. This, oh. yeah, it's cute. Yeah, yeah. use the promo code yeah. chaos manscaped.com. But yeah, so this yeah. is called the crop preserver. So what did you think? Yes, yeah. so I look at it and I open it and I smell it. And when I put it in my nose, I say, and then I look, I say, oh, wait a minute. And I said, body ordering. Talking to Mike. Yeah. I said, body ordering. Oh, this must what, what Chris might use on his balls. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask Jasmine if this is what his boss smells like. <laughs> <laughs> what did Vinny but, say? Huh? And what did Vinny say? Vinny didn't say nothing. No comment. She said she wants no comment. No comment. But then I asked you and you said what you said. What? Oh, what this did is, I say? I don't know. What did I say about my balls? I don't know. I probably sell the uh, tuck so them this back is or what whatever. your nuts Here, be smelling like? I didn't thing. know that they had like yeah. things like that for your nuts. Like, oh, yeah. They have all kinds. Manscaped.com has all kinds of things for you nuts. I'm going to give you a Manscaped <laughs> care package. They sent me a care package. They got the lawnmower 3.0. You could shave your, you could shave, because you could shave your balls. You could tuck it back, shave, you know, your mangina, whatever you want to do. Manscaped got you covered. Manscaped.com, promo code chaos. <laughs> See, the thing is, you know what? You know, I feel like I met my match with TT because normally I can just be gay and free and like out gay the guest, sure. but there's no way to out gay Jerry. You cannot. No. no. Um, in prison, anyway, did, you did you read books? Did you read? It's a match, right? What's a pelo? You're gonna have to throw it away after this. What's a pelo? Stop touching it. What's a pelo? Oh, hair. hair. It looks great. In prison, did you yeah, read books? It, great. it does. Yes. Did you read a lot in prison? Yeah, especially no, I didn't read a lot while I was in population, but once I got locked up in like SHU, like long term keep oh. lock. So you got thrown in the hole yourself? Oh my god, I got thrown in a hole so many times. Why? Like, I got thrown in a hole for two years straight. I was in a hole. Like, you could only get an hour wreck. You only get 23, 23 hours locked in. What? An hour a day. Do you, you have sunlight out. in that room? Not really. And that shit is smaller than a bathroom. Like, the bathtub is your bed, the little sink, and that's it. For two years? For two years. And you have nothing in there but few books. And that's it. No, no, nothing else. No so what TV, did you do? no radio, no nothing. For what, what did you do to get put in, in the hole? Work out. Oh, what did I do? Yeah, I well, cut these two dudes. <laughs> I cut two people. Why? I cut one in the face and another one. I stabbed him with an ice pick. And what? they gave me a year for each. It's bullshit. And another one, I shit it down. I, you shit it down, I had, you said? My man, I, I was with my husband. I had a husband in there. And we okay. were together. And they cut Vinny's him. so jealous? And they cut him. She's like, like how does he have a husband and I don't? <laughs> So pissed they over that. Saw face like that. So they listen. Oh, sorry. So, so <laughs> no. he got cut. So he got cut. So the person that cut him, the CO seen them bleeding. So they took him away. And I said, baby, don't worry about it. I got this. I'll take care of it. Right. So I went after the guy that cut my man. Right. So I went in the cell. I got a can top about this big, a roast beef can top. I folded. I went to the guy's cell and I sliced him in the face with it. Good. Then the other one, I, I hit him with an ice pick. Mm-hmm. I started with an ice pick. Then the other, then the CEO comes and tells me, Miranda, pack up, because they knew my husband just got cut. Miranda's I'm, your last name, not your first yes, name. Yes, Miranda's my last name. So he knew I was probably in trouble, so he said, Miranda, pack up, you're moving to another unit. I said, okay. So they all started um, screaming, oh, they took your bitch. What happened? They cut your bitch. And I said, yeah, they cut my bitch, motherfucker. You my bitch now. All this kind of drama going on. <laughs> so while I packed up my shit, I shit in a big Folgers coffee jar. Oh Ryan. God. A big one. I smashed shit and oh pissed. <laughs> Shook that shit real good. So while I'm going down the aisle with my car, this nigga be saying, oh, they took your bitch. Ha ha, they took your bitch. And I say, yeah, motherfucker, they took my bitch. That's okay, that's okay. So he kept on running his mouth. So I took the car and I kept on going. So he thought I had left. So he's close to the gate. So I turn around back with the big jar of Folger shit it, um, jar and I slash that shit right on his face. Shit all over his mouth. His face, his clothes. That guy stood just like with his mouth open, all dripping shit all over his mouth and shit. And I said, who's my bitch now, motherfucker? Yes. And I just left. There you go. And, and then I you just, just left. Then I, you take just left no, I take no shit from nobody in there. Well, no, you don't take I, shit. I, no, I you, like, you, you throw it back it right shit. back no, at them. But really, a lot of dudes in there, gang members, all kind of gang members, they have my respect for me. Because right. they knew I would get down. I get busy. I used to fight all the time. Right. I used to cut people. 
They never messed around with me. I was one of the leaders in there. They used to control all the gay people in there. Right. I was like one of the heads. You know when they got the heads of yeah. different gang members, right. like you're the leader. I was one of the leaders and almost in the whole state. Right. Controlling all these gay people. Right. Every time they used to have a problem with a gay person, like the gang members, they right. used to come up to me. Right. And complain about it. Would they, would the gay they, community, would you guys like be able, like, would they let you have like parades or like decorate no, stuff? No, they don't let you, they don't no. let you really be fun and gay. No. <laughs> no, That's, but like doctors no. and stuff, like they used to give you stuff to like grow your breasts. Yeah, they right? give you extra Oh, so these are not mouth. fake. These are, these are, these are homegrown. These are for real. Yeah. These I thought you had real. silicone. No. No. That's your boobies. These, these grew naturally. These are natural. I was getting close to that, but then I found my fitness pal. Um, <laughs> yeah, they give you they give you pills in there to grow breasts. Look, and Pimp's that, got a question. That, Listen, yeah. TT, Pimp's got a question. Pimp is very close to being flipped by you. Just so you know, Pimp <laughs> oh, yeah. is right on the flip line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pimp. Uh, who was actually the best lovers in prison? Like gang members or arsonists uh, or murderers? Um, gang members. Gang members are the best lovers. Yeah, gang members are the freakiest in there. And all these dog ass n- everything. Those are the ones that really have, yeah, like fun. a lot of gay people and right. always having sex with different kind of people. Right, right. The ones that are called gang members or gangsters and all that shit. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones they get. So they they're hard on the outside and then hard and, on the inside. And they soft in the inside. Are they soft on the inside? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. They well, it depends. Soft Not with TT sometimes. though. Nobody's soft around TT. No. Um, <laughs> did you ever read a book called The Forty Eight Laws of Power? In, in, in prison? Yeah, I had that book that right there. I had yes. it, but I never got to read it. Like, really got into it. Right. Well, here's the thing. But I believe it's a good book. It's a great book. Yeah. Every every episode, we like to talk about one of the laws of power from this book. So there's 48 yeah. laws. We got, we, we're going to talk about all 48 throughout the year. So the law that I found that I actually just read, and to me, it's so fitting, is Law 25. And the law is Recreate Yourself. And you are the definition of recreating yourself. You'd be a different person every time you walk in and out of this, uh, in and out of this house. And I love you for that. So here, here's recreate yourself. Here's what they say: judgment. Do not accept the roles that society foists on you. Recreate yourself by forging a new identity, one that commands attention and never bores the audience. TT does not bore the audience. Be the master of your own image rather than letting others define it for you. Incorporate dramatic devices into your public gestures and actions, like throwing shit in somebody's face. Your power will be enhanced and your character will seem larger than life. And you, my friend, seem larger than life. So I feel like this law really applies to you. Yeah, it does. Okay, I guess you didn't feel that way. (laughs) No. Here, here's what they say. Understand this. Here's one thing that I highlighted because I was like, oh, understand this. Because here's the thing, TT, guys like me and you, because I'm the kind of guy, I fall in love with men, have sex with women, a really stimulating conversation with a guy. But then I, but I only want to have sex with women. We don't fit into whatever society. I fall in love with women, but I have sex with men. There you go. We're opposite. <laughs> we're, look at that. See? Wow. <laughs> I found my opposite. <laughs> Vinny, leave. Um, bye. Uh, bye. No, because we we don't fit in. You especially, you do not fit into the norms of you know society. Whatever box society has, you don't fit into that. And I appreciate that because it says, understand this. He says, the world wants to assign you a role in life. And once you accept that role, you are doomed. Your power is limited to the tiny amount allotted to the role you have selected or have been forced to assume. An actor, on the other hand, which is what we are, plays, and they don't mean actor in entertainment. They mean a person who's not fitting into the norms. An actor, on the other hand, plays many roles. Enjoy that protein power and protein power. And if it is beyond you, at least forge a new identity, one of your own making, one that has no boundaries assigned to it by an envious and resentful world. The act of defiance is Promethean. And being Promethean means like being rebellious and kind of creative and innovative. It makes you responsible for your own creation. So you are responsible for, nobody made TT. TT made TT. I made myself. You made yourself. Talking to Mike. Talking to Mike. Talking to the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no. So you made yourself. Yeah. And you know what I noticed about you? Even though there's been times where you've gotten emotional, all I see is strength. All I see is strength because I've noticed this too. This is why people like who want to go and cry in public and do that. 
not that crying is weakness, you have to express your emotions, but we almost kind of feel like, you know, it, it, there is a little bit of a dent then in a person's character when you're like right. going out and spilling your beans because you have a lot of pain, a lot of things you went through. And although you got emotional, you kept strong because, and that's, yeah. uh, because here it says the first step in the process of self-creation is self-consciousness, being aware of yourself as an actor and taking control of your appearance and emotions. People wear their hearts on their sleeves in society are tiresome and embarrassing. Those who cry in public may temporarily elicit sympathy, but sympathy soon soon turns to scorn and irritation at their self-obsessiveness. Right. They're crying to get attention. We feel, and a malicious part of us wants to deny them that satisfaction. Right. There's always a time to cry. There's always a time to be strong. Like right now, I'm speaking. I'm doing this broadcast with you. But at the same time, while I was speaking, yeah, I wanted to explode. I wanted to cry. I wanted to let it all out. But at, the t at times, too, you got to just hold that in and be strong. Yes, and that's and what you And at your own moments, at your own time, that's when you let it out. You can't cry just like you said for people could feel for you right. or anything feel sympathy for you or feel sorry for you. Right. No. Right. You know, your problems are your problems. Right. Whatever you feel inside, yeah, you're going to let it out. Okay, right. but it's not for the whole world to know. Right. You know? Right. Oh, here we go. So here, we, we take advice. No, here, Check I'm going to read it. We take advice. We take hey, advice Chris. on this podcast from the fans. So this person has, adv has advice or, ha or they, they have questions. We take questions from the fans and we can, give them, we can give them advice. These people want advice. So maybe you, Tita, you and I right now, maybe we can help this guy out. His name is Jack McHugh. He says, hey, Chris, what's up? I got a problem with my girlfriend. Oh, I was, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> put the mic up, put the mic up. He goes, I was wondering if you could solve. I'm white and she's El Salvadorian. So make no mistake, I'm colonizing that ass. But my problem is she uses my Caucasianism as a weapon against me to believe her beliefs. For example, I voted for a third party. That means I, it's white privilege. Her thought process is that anyone white who doesn't vote or think the way she does about politics is a gross di display of privilege. If social issues comes up, she tells me before I even say anything that I should keep quiet on it because I'm white. Like I'm going to hold a town meeting on it or some shit. She complains the United States is such a terrible place, but her family immigrated from El Salvador to escape war and rape. And every time I try to talk to her about it, she gets emotional and it always results in a fight. So how do you and Vinny work with social issues? And uh, and TT Jerry being a Latina, I got two Latinas in my life now. Being a Latina, could I hear Vinny's opinion too? Thanks, and please help before I turn into the liberal cuck she wants me to be. Jack, oh. how do you feel about that? So, what I feel about this is him being white and she's Puerto Rican or Salvadoran or whatever. It's still the same shit. She's Latin. Yeah. I mean, what I think is uh, get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Leave her. Let her go. Get somebody that understands you, that's willing to a call, um, be with you. And no, just work it out. Talk it out. Um, use both our adults. Right. Talk it out. Sit down. Hear her opinion. Let her listen to your opinion. Why you think about it? There's always a, a way to work things out. Understanding is the number one. Communicating is the number two. You know, and believing in each other. Right. You know. There's always a way to work it out. Speak to her. Let her know how you feel. Right. You know the way she thinks about you. Right. The way she throws things back at your face and letting you know, oh, this and this and that, just because right. you're white or whatever. No, let her know your feelings. Let her know how you feel. Yeah, Vinny. You know, there's always a way to solve things. Right. You know, yeah. but if she wants to continue being who she is, like a Latina girl, because they're really bitches at times, but <laughs> hey, what you gonna do? What you, you gonna got, do? Vinny, how do you feel? You don't always have to be on the same page, but I mean, I don't, yeah, you have to like be able to talk things out. Right. Yeah, and conflict is good in relationships. Other, you can't make each other like feel guilty about things. Like if you're no. gonna be together, if you choose to be together, don't like put guilt on each other constantly. Yeah. yeah. But if your political views are that different, then maybe it's not. Maybe gonna, it doesn't work. Not gonna work because it sounds right. to me like just from this email, and I don't know at all, but I'm just taking what? a guess. It sounds to me like his girlfriend is just one of those people that wants to be angry. She just wants to be angry at people. She probably she gets most of her information from TikTok, doesn't want to read a book, doesn't want to do any of that. She's more of a oh, follower she wants than to a leader. Look pretty, do her yeah. nails done, look yeah. cute all the time. Yeah. And, you know, and one Jack, of those Jack real... is, I think if he stays with this, he's just going to continue. If he wants to be in a relationship, it seems like his, he, if he wants to be in a relationship, he's going to have to bow down to her and submit to her and kind of become a little cucked out 
if and, and then listen, if that's the girl of your dreams and that means so much, then do it. You know, just don't yeah, have kids with her because once you have kids, if you're stuck. The, if that's the woman you want to no, be I'm not with, stuck. I'm happy to be. If here. you in love with her, <laughs> um, if you in love with her. Hey, you got no other choice but to go by her or whatever she Then wants. talk about yeah. it, though. Like, you know, just she like can't I make said, him feel guilty all the time. How about if you do nice. sit down with her? How many times maybe you have sat down with her and explained to her how he feels and spoken to her right. about it? But she's still being that cocky bitch. She just wants to be who she, she wants to, you ever, to you be. Ever like, dated, what, have you ever dated a white man like that, that you don't feel like they understood you, like your racial stuff yeah i have i have but there's always a way there's always a, 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 a solution to it like i told you there's always talking understanding communicating right. that's the only way right you know and if that don't work then if you do love her you're gonna have to accept her the way she is that's what it you is you got no other choice yeah but if you want to move on just yeah you move on somebody that will understand you and it's on your level there you go because what She's not on his level, level, right? They're not on the same level right now. They're not on the same level right now, but they could get on the same level if she will be smart enough and if she does love them, she will make an effort to understand him you know what if she's a lesbian should Jack start well, taking estrogen then, therapy then if she's a lesbian I guess he's fucked <laughs> <laughs> alright alright last segment last segment of the show what we like to do is the anxiety Tuesday segment where we talk about mental health so I've talked about meditation right. and I've talked about different type of techniques breathing and even jogging is, is, is good right. but I was going to talk about um, you know some things that I've been doing but I really want to hear like what you do specifically now because here's another thing about you is when you got out of prison, it was the beginning of March. I remember it was late February, early it March. It was on February 26th. It just February. made a year. And what's today's date? Today's like March, March 4th. 4th. So, yeah, so it's it was been about a year. year and four days. It's been a year and four days. But, rem but remember, yay. But remember, as soon as, there it is. As soon as we got. I feel like I'm giving <laughs> don't shit. do you have to poop again <laughs> yo dude, go get him a Folgers can um, um here I got pregnant holding this microphone oh nice be a nice biracial baby um do you do you feel because right when you got out of prison COVID happened and we got locked down so do you yeah. feel like you went from I one lockdown to like another from one lockdown to another yes that's the did you I feel felt. like Jesus wants me in prison huh? did you feel like Jesus wants me locked up why am I playing? <laughs> anyway, what? No, I'm saying because you, when you came out of prison, when you came out of prison, you you got went right into quarantine lockdown. Yeah, I went right into quarantine lockdown. Did that uh, did that bother you? In a way, it did. In a way, it didn't, because it was like freedom to me. Anyway, I was out. So right, that's that was the most beautiful thing to see my family again and be free. Right. You know, but the only thing I was missing was my mom because when I came out, my right. mom wasn't here anymore. Right. And that's the only thing that really was bothering me. Right. Lot. And it still affected me. Of course. You know, it's of something course. that I can't get over and it still affected me a lot. And it's like, I blame myself for that. I blame myself. I, I, I will always feel guilty. I will always blame myself for losing my mom. Right. No, but that wasn't your fault. So when you're going through those. Fault, but I still go through it. So Theo, when you're when you're going through those lows, like how do you like make yourself feel better? Like how do you how do you help yourself mentally? I feel better when I feel like that. I start thinking about the good times that me and mom had. I start thinking about the joy. I start thinking how funny she was, how she used to make me laugh, how we used to have fun together. So you appreciate her your time with her. That's yeah, what you start to I do. So I never think about the bad times that right. I went through with her. Because if I do, I think I would never make it. I think life. our brains, our brains are wired to sometimes think about the negative stuff and think about the bad stuff for like survival. But if we can just know that and say, no, like every day is a good day. Like every day we oh. should just be positive because you oh, don't want when it's your last. I do my workout. I be looking at YouTube. I look at Jack. Uh, 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 um, workout. Yeah, go go Jazzy Method. Patreon.com slash Jazzy Method. workout. I do a little bit of her workout. If not, I do my own workout. I go running for a little while. I take walks. You walk that's everywhere. How, Your Fitbit yeah, gets a workout. That's how I distract my mind and, and work with my mental health issues. I also see my, my therapist. I have a therapist I speak to, you know? And yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you have, 
what's the what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you in prison or that you've seen in prison? The craziest thing that happened to me in prison or seen in prison. Do you got anything crazy? The only thing crazy that happened. Don't say it now. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. If you want to hear the craziness that T.T. Jerry's about to spew, you got to go on Patreon. We gave you enough on YouTube. Thank you, T.T. Jerry, so much. Patreon.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. All my love and all my support to the LTBG community. I love you guys. That wasn't it, but okay. Absolutely. This is Christy Chaos. It doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> Crazy chaos. There are no rules. Ain't every no rules. Ain't crazy chaos. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, coming at you on YouTube, patreon.com Thank slash you, Christy Chris. Comedy. And don't forget to give your thumbs up for my boy, Chris. Absolutely. Thumbs Hello. up. Get out your Folgers cans. So you literally, so what was that day like when you were in prison and Tupac comes in? Or, or Tupac no, was already Tupac there? Tupac was already there. We played basketball together and everything. He was real open. He, yeah. he was a real open individual. Like... Did he, he ever? Did he anybody. ever flirt with you? Um. Uh oh. Every time I used to walk and everybody used to turn, they thought I was a bitch in, in the facility walking around the yard. Yeah. So, but when I used to turn around, they say, "Oh no, they're not." No, I know. <laughs> I remember one time you were in the, you were in the kitchen and Jasmine wasn't home, and I came up behind you. I was like, "Hey, babe," and you were like, "Oh." I was like, "Oh." Ah. Saying, when you were in prison, did they like Donald Trump in prison, or did they not like him? Uh, what did the inmates think? Or was it split? Yeah, everybody, mostly everybody was going for Trump because they said they like Trump because Trump keeps it real. He caught you on the sausage like, in your ass? Miranda, what are you doing? <laughs> and the sausage is hanging from the bottom behind my butt. Just hanging. Like I said, nothing. What are, you talking, what are you talking about? I got that shit was so cold. It was freezing my asshole. <laughs> I was like, breakfast time. 